So we have, we've got Boeing's earnings, we've got Apple's earnings, uh, we've got the Fed and trade talks. Are we in a better place than we thought? I think we are in a better place. And, you know, the, McDonald's. so far the month of January, the S&P is up 5.3%. When you look at that in context, it's uh, a very, very strong January. Uh, over the course of the years, when you look at January returns, uh, if the month were to end here at 5.3%, it would put us in the, the 90th percentile for performance. But it's important to recognize there's still a long ways to go. We've recouped less than half of the, the drop that we saw in the fourth quarter of 2018. Uh, European markets have, have also seen a lift, but they've recovered even less uh, than they lost in 2018. So the question becomes, where's the catalyst? I don't. I think the catalyst is right in front of us. It's the central banks, and and last. Well, the week, catalyst. We'll talk. We'll hear from the central bank yeah. this afternoon. What What do you want to hear? Well, I think the the talk from the Fed started last week that maybe they would keep their balance sheet bigger than than people initially thought. You know, people thought they would run their balance sheet off to about one and a half to two and a half trillion dollars, but there's talk that they could maintain a larger balance sheet, which means they 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 slow that runoff. They end that runoff earlier. That's point number one. Point number two. <coughs> is the ECB has reopened the door to some form of QE, right? Because conditions in Europe are, are that poor. The last time leading economic indicators in Europe were as poor as they are today was 2012. And that's when Draghi initiated the QE. So I think the ECB's got to do something to reverse its policy decision. Then thirdly is the Bank of China. And they've unleashed about 2.2 trillion RMB of stimulus. So the point of, uh, about the central banks is this. When you look at the Fed, the ECB, and the Bank of China, they're moving back toward policy easing, which is a sharp right. contrast from 2018. In 2018, money supply contracted. This year, we at least removed that headwind, and that's positive for okay, risk so, assets. But you look at where the equity markets are in the United States right now, mm -hmm. and we were having this conversation with Mike Santoli. Yeah. Is this a bottom? I mean, or I don't know if it's a bottom, but is this a floor at least for where we are, and we're only going up from here? Or Mike Santoli was, you know, he was, he was, I want to say waffling a little bit, <laughs> sort of suggest, you know, maybe in a couple of months we could turn the opposite way again on us. I'd say we move higher. And the reason is if you, if you think back to exactly a year ago, January 30th, 2018, you know, we would be talking about number one, Fed hiking, number two, quantitative tightening, and, and number three, a market that was trading at 21 times earnings. Today we're talking about the Fed being on hold. We're talking about them potentially slowing the runoff of their balance sheet. And we have an S&P that's trading at 16 times earnings. That's an attractive valuation in a lower rate environment. I'd say that argues uh, for bullishness on, on equity and credit risk assets. Okay, let me throw a little monkey wrench into your plan. What about China? Isn't it possible that, that the Chinese economy is so damaged, much more damaged than we appreciate? Yep. Yeah, I think the story out of China will be bad news is good news. That they're bad gonna, have to, news. They're gonna okay. have to unleash every form of stimulus in order to put a floor in their economy. And that ends up becoming a positive for risk assets. You know, we saw that. We know how that happened, unfolded here in the United States when the Fed expanded its balance sheet. We know how it worked in Europe when the, when the ECB expanded their balance sheet. Uh, and I think China's got to do it. So they've introduced 2.2 trillion renminbi so far. I think they could easily do that and more in order to put a floor in their economy.